our, our minds and our ears attuned and fixed to what the word of the Lord has to say. Amen? Amen. Amen. Brother Titus, come and deliver your heart. Training a young soldier or a sailor 
begins to look and act differently. David trained his soldiers with truth. And in Psalms 18, we can find six basic charges that he gives his soldiers. The truths and charges need to be heard and executed by every soldier in the army of God. The first one is get other authority. Now, us older saints, we've heard this time after time. We, we know about submission. Our pastor teaches it. But for our younger younger ones, we, we I know we hear about this in Sunday school too, maybe a little bit. But I want, I want it to really get in your minds. I mean, this is something that we all have to do and all battle with, some of us even. Listen and follow the directions and orders of those who are in authority of us, authority figures of us. We have trouble sometimes understanding that. But the first thing a soldier must learn to, learn to do is to be submissive. From the moment he arrives to boot camp, his hair is cut, his clothing is selected for him, his schedule is determined by his leaders. Nothing belongs to the recruiting one. That's right. For a reason, freedom is lost and submission is learned. You can go to James 4 and 7. Bible says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The great importance of submission, of being, submit, being submissive to your, your, your family, your, your, your parents, your pastor, and your spiritual leaders. The reason we are submissive towards them, first of all, to be obedient to God, because He has set He, he set that as far as His government, you know, in His kingdom, we there's a government that we have to abide by their rules, that their rules and laws. But that is the order that God has get, God has given us. So we must submit unto Him, and how we submit unto Him is through and submit to our parents, our pastor. Our spiritual leaders. So remember that because when you do so, you are being obedient to God. In Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2, there's an order given to the saints. The word of God reads, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed. About with a with so great of a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he Except for him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Two principles that I want to focus on in the scripture are given to us here. The first one is preparation, and the second is perfection. We must prepare. That people, we must prepare, or we must prepare ourselves and practice and drill, follow the instructions until we are at a stage where we are sound and perfected. That doesn't mean you are, you will ever be perfect, but we must move towards perfection. Our drill instructors, our parents, our pastor, spiritual leaders will prep us by teaching us the word of God, teaching us to pray fast, and teaching us how to praise and worship. Most 
importantly, our leaders will be examples to us by doing these things and living a holy life. We must follow suit. It is important. I talk to you, TJ. I talk to you, Luke. I talk to you, Austin. I talk to you guys about this all the time. It's not about the drums for me. That's a talent that God gave me. It's an ability he gave me, and I'm going to do so. But that's not what it's about. It's about being submissive. It's about following suit. It's about being obedient to the word of God, following his commands. That God can increase that ability. He can increase the giftings. He can increase whatever it is that you desire in the spirit. He can do those things. But the thing that's most important is being submissive and following suit. That's what's important. The first part of preparation is getting rid of every weight or the junk in our lives or anything that can hinder the Spirit of God moving in our lives. In Hebrews 12 and 1, every weight refers to excessive affection and concern for body and present life in the world. So everything that pleases our flesh or Anything that have excessive uh, desires, that we have excessive desires for, are wiped away or taken away, taken away from us when we join in this earth. It's instructive. It's important. God wants us, our minds and our hearts to be clear. He want to purge, he want to purge all the unclean things out of our lives so that we can be teachable, so that we can learn the principles of holiness and righteous living. By being obedient to the commands of God, and our instructors, we will learn to perfect our training or our drills. We, we train or drill the following areas, uh, like I've already mentioned, prayer, fasting, uh, reading God's word, giving, praise and worship. These are all things that we are well aware of. So we must be consistent and obedient. Secondly, the second thing that, that we're going to focus on when we are in the army of God or when we are in the, the recruit stages, the boot camp stages. It's getting on fire for the cause. Or, or, or being passionate for the cause. The second goal of a boot of a boot camp is to inspire the recruit to have passion for the cause of the nation. The cause for the nation, for the kingdom of God, is to be a soul winner. In our struggle against the enemy, we must be on fire to win the souls of man, the kingdom of God. I'm going to read uh, from Psalms 18 to 28. For you will light my lamp, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. David is, 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 is praying that the Lord would keep him, keep his light burning. And our spirit, for in the tough times, let me say this, in the tough times when we are, our spirit is needed to revive, when we feel like we are not, we, we are not close to God, it's just like some things that are going on, we're just struggling, we can't seem to get in his presence, we can't seem to feel him. We pray, we read, we talk to our parents, we talk to our, our leaders, and we, we just not feel it. When you when you were going to boot camp, you're tired. You're stressed out from all the physical uh, activities that you're doing, all the, all the conditioning you're doing for your body. And mentally, you know, you're already starting to break down. You're just exhausted. But the Lord desires for your light to remain lit. That candle, the candlestick. It remains for your candlestick to remain lit. It is very important because we know that the Bible says that we are the light of the world. We are now the light. We carry the light inside of us. We 
will carry something inside of us. And when we go out to this world, they see something different about you. They see something different about you. You're not the same. You don't act the same. You don't talk the same. You don't dress the same. You don't look the same way. You don't desire the same things. But you desire God. You want God. So in, in, in boom, boom camp, if you will, instructors, they're, they're pushing you. They're pushing you to believe in what their agenda is. What they have set for each and every recruit. So when things of the world began to tempt us, to weigh us down, and to carry us life up against us, there's only one thing that we can do, there's only one thing that I know to do, is to call on the name of the Lord, that he give us strength, that he be our strong tower, our refuge, the one we run to, to keep our light lit, to keep that camp lit. But the Bible said he is the consuming fire. So when we run into him, we're asking him, Lord, is something wrong? Is something something not there? We need you to light this candle, make it brighter. Make put some oil, anoint me, put some put some oil in that lamp, that it may burn longer. So get on fire, get passionate, be compassionate about what you're doing. You're doing a great thing, you're doing a marvelous thing. I said it up by being in the army of God. Don't be ashamed to worship. Don't be ashamed to live this lifestyle out there in the world. Don't be ashamed. You're called to do it. So do it with joy and happiness. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. You preach it. You teach it. Be prepared, this is number three, be prepared for warfare. So how do you prepare for warfare? You discipline yourself. We must discipline ourselves physically and spiritually. We all know about this because we we went through a month of fasting and prayer as a, as a body of believers and, and uh, God did great things. He's continuing to do great things. He will continue to do great things because of the sacrifice we made. But most important because of the love that we have for him. Now, I know some people were just bent out of shape because of the certain fasts that we have to do and uh, the Daniel fast. Nobody likes that. I become well acquainted with it. <laughs> uh, change my my um, diet and the things that I do and eat. Um, but I learned something. I learned something very important. The Lord really began to show me how your physical body connects to your spiritual body. He really began to break in on me and give me some understanding on these things. What you pray physically is very important. It will affect your spirit, your spiritual walk with God. And it's very important that we pray daily, that we discipline ourselves to pray daily, to read the scripture daily, to fast often, to praise and worship our Creator, to meditate on His Word, His Holiness. Anytime we, no matter what it is, just meditate on Jesus. And I find it, you know, I find it very, very, it's mind-blowing that the way the Lord began to show me this and deal with me on this, just meditating on him, just throughout my day I can be a word. The worst thing can happen to me. But because I've set my mind at the beginning of the day, I pray, I just throughout my day, I focus and meditate on the Lord. There's something so crazy happened at work. And I still have the joy. I can be hands up in the kid or taking down the kid or straining the kid and praying in my mind. But that, took, that, that, that didn't happen at first. 
it took me time, it took time and time, a lot of time just focusing on God and, and doing it in my own time, in a secret place. Just loving on the Lord, just reading his word and having music, spiritual music, hymns, rotating it through my, my mind as I go throughout my day. And let me say this, I know it because I experienced it. I couldn't do both. What I mean by that, I had a very hard time, most of you know this, I've had a very hard time being a good musician, I'm all about music, I've had a very hard time trying to listen to secular music or listen to gospel music at the same time. Every time I would go and try to sing a spiritual song, it's something I probably didn't share with everybody, but every time, there was a funny time when I tried to go and sing a song and enjoy the spiritual work, I, I could not. The Lord was saying, the Lord told me, look, he showed me very clearly that it's what you, you, you're trying to do both, but it won't work. It won't work. And as a recruit, as a soldier, I had to let go of every weight, every weight that would try to beset me or that would hinder my growth, my walk with God. I know our flesh is a very hard thing to, to, to handle sometimes, but with the help of the Lord, with prayer, with fasting, with reading the word, with being dedicated, with being disciplined in our walk with God, these things can fade away. Things that will hinder you in your relationship with God can fade away if you discipline yourself. As I teach this tonight, I, I, I preach it to myself, I teach it to myself. I need more of it. I'm not perfect. But I desire so much to please God in every single way that I can. I desire so much to be an elite warrior, soldier in the army of God. It's all I think about. It's all I want to do. So, to the young people, I encourage you, discipline yourself. You are in the army. Whether you like it or not, adults, whether you like it or not, you are in spiritual warfare. You can't get that to your head. So we must discipline ourselves. Lord, we must make the right decision, decisions and choices in our life. Because we're doing so, we are pleasing God. And He is able to move and to, to take us farther in our spiritual walk. Because there's so much that He has in store for all of us. But it's up to us to get there. It's our choice. It's our choice. We have been given the right armor and the right instructions. Our church must become a spiritual armory, preparing its people for the struggle against the darkness and the doctrines of demons. I believe we are truly, truly in a state of preparation right now. We want to rush things. We want to rush to get those, to be up to operate in those gifts. We want to rush to be a, a musician. We want to rush to be on a platform or to do this or to do that. But we must prepare. We must prepare. Our flesh doesn't like the weight. It doesn't like being patient. And yet some of us might be just very passionate about the cause. Remember, the cause is to win souls. It's not to be, the main focus is not to be the drummer, the preacher, the this or the that, but it's to win souls. When our eyes are fixed on God, Everything else will flow. Everything else will happen in its time and in its place. It will indeed happen. So we are soul winners. So 
soldiers, soldiers of every God must be disciplined. Number four, believe you can win. Have vision. Vision yourself winning the battles. Vision yourself doing the things of God. Vision yourself preaching, teaching to people. Vision yourself going to the mall, handing out tracts, or ministering to people, or whatever it may be. Picture yourself doing it. Picture yourself, if you're not there yet, picture yourself worshiping at the altar. Picture yourself having a prayer life, a continuous prayer life, and, and a dedication to read the Word of God. Picture yourself, vision it. Tap into the vision of the pastor. Tap into the vision of what he's trying to do. It's very important. But our vision, we perish. So we can see what the Lord is trying to do, what our pastor is trying to do. You get help. I mean, it's, it's, it's taught, it's preached every Sunday. We're trying to unify this body. We're unifying this body for the for the work, for the greater, the, the great work, the great things to come. But right now, we're prepared. I believe we're going to see Sunday after Sunday, and week after week, we're going to see uh, God move heavily and greatly as He already has. I feel like it's going to increase. Uh, I see powerful, powerful, powerful things happening. And what we've seen so far is not comparable to the things that are coming. It's the importance of preparation. Preparation. Believing. Being disciplined. Having vision. So think big. Don't put God in the box. Think big. Vision, vision yourself doing great things for God. Pray about these things. If, if, you, if you feel that God is showing you something in your dreams or just you just have these random thoughts of something that you can see yourself doing in church or the kingdom of God, pursue it. Pray about it. Ask God to lead you and to guide you, to instruct you. And he will do it. Number five, Move on here. Know your weapons. As a soldier, it is important to know your weapons. In Psalms uh, 18 and 30, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. I was reading from the NIV. I'm going to read verse 31 to 32. For who is God except the Lord? For who is a rock except God? It is God who arms me with his strength and makes my way perfect. Notice the first thing, the first thing, God has a perfect battle plan for us. He has a perfect manual. The Word of God is perfect for us. His ways are not our ways. Once again, the important of having vision so that we can tap in, that we can to draw an eye unto him so that we can see what he's trying to do. God wants to give us deeper revelation and understanding about his ways, about his plan. The word perfect means absolutely complete. We must fight according to his plan, not ours. Secondly, Jesus has given us a sharp two-edged sword, which is his word, which I've said before. We must will this uh, sword effectively. If 
we want to be victorious in this battle. God has also given us a shield of protection. He's given us faith. Or the way David was saying, shield of salvation. So we understand this. But the word is highly important. We must know the weapon. That's the reason, that's the reason why I've mentioned already we must read and we must just tap into these things. We must understand the word of God. You know, if you have questions about whatever it is, you know, parents, pastors, spiritual instructors, we're here to help you guide us, to help you understand what God, His word, understand His word, His ways. Jesus exercises our gifts so our hands will be strengthened, made for war. So they will be strengthened, made to war. Number six, the sixth thing I want to talk about is going to the next level, excelling, excellent. Psalms 18 and 33, it reads, He makes my feet like the feet of deers or hides. And sets me on a high place, set me in high places. So understanding this, who have always prepared and moves, always preps and moves us, a soldier, the army for the level of battle, for the level of warfare. We can conquer giants and mountains in our lives. So with doing so, with doing those things, our feet must be strong so that we can walk in the footsteps of the Holy Ghost. That's the reason that we have the term Christian. People call us Christians. Christians are Christ-like. We do the things of God. We do the things that He would do. We walk the way that He has set before us. So it's very important that we do it. The hind, the, the Bible mentions the hind, which is the female, or female red deer. Uh, when she takes her steps, her rear foot will always land where the front foot leaves. Likewise in the spiritual, our God allows us to walk in his footsteps, tracking hard after him. So we understand that. We must do our best to walk in his ways, to obey his commandments, to do as he says. Uh, so, David basically shows us a manual, gives us great advice in the Psalms of uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 18. He showed how he trained his soldiers. He showed them truth. He showed them how to prepare themselves for battle. Like I've said before, it's important that we understand these things in a spiritual, in a spiritual way. In the spiritual, we must understand these things. Because when we as a church began to move forward and experience things that we never experienced before. How we get through those things, it all boils down to how we prepare. It all boils down to how we prepare. We all still be tonight. Like I said at the beginning, 
I really wanted to just focus in on the young people tonight. Everybody else, I know this work can encourage you. It can, it can show you some ways and show you some things that you can do or focus on to prepare yourself spiritually. Uh, there are many other things and, and other ways that we can prepare, but these are the basics. And I want you, TJ, I want you, Luke, I want all of you, Austin, all you young ladies, I want you to understand that this is important stuff. And that if you can just be obedient, if you can submit yourself, if you can follow the commands that your parents give you, follow the commands that the pastor gives, follow them because we're doing so, we are, we are obeying and being obedient to God. So submission.
Strengthen us tonight, God. Prepare our minds and our hearts for the needs to come, God. Get the hold of our hearts tonight, God. It would be, but may we submit our souls, our minds, everything that we are to you tonight, God. We need you tonight, God. Ushala wa usha kaya wa sabu. Pray for our pastor tonight, God. Continue to protect him, God. Continue to send angels his way. God, as he leaves this church, let him continue to follow in the steps of the Holy Ghost. Ushala wa usha kaya wa sabu. Every day. 